Alhamdulillah, Ustazam Rasulullah. I'm very happy to see you here today. And uh, I'm delighted and thrilled to be with you. I will start with something very simple. Because, brother, in the ayah which he recited, talk about the stony hearted people. Fasad Kulubuhum. Be all the time in the companionship of Allah. Kunu fi ma'iyat Allah tuwal waqt. Ala bi dhikrillah tatma'in al-khurub. With the remembrance of Allah, you will have very satisfied and settling heart. How can you be in ma'iyat Allah? Kayfa takunu fi ma'iyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you be in the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How? By reading his book, by looking at his words, by reciting what he revealed Abu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by listening to his words as well. If you can't read, you look at the wording, you listen to the recitation. This is the ma'iyah. Of Allah. This is the companionship of Allah. You can imagine, sisters and brothers, that Allah is sitting with you all the time to listen to your beautiful recitation. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Because you are reading his words and he is listening to you. And he is giving the one who is reading with a struggle two ajr, two rewards. One for the struggle and one for the recitation. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? He is with us 24-7. But when you read his words, he is listening. See, remember the story of Moses, peace be upon him. When he was scared to go to the Pharaoh's house, or the Pharaoh's palace in Egypt, where I came from. You are Egyptian? You look like Egyptian. <laughs> look like the Egyptian queens. Ah, she is Cleopatra. <laughs> yes? No. <laughs> so he was scared. He was scared to go to Pharaoh, because Pharaoh was Pharaoh, was a tyrant man, and the man claimed that he was a god. What happened? Allah told him. Musa, alayhi salam, inni ma'akuma asma'a wa ara. I am with you, Moses, listening and seeing what's happening. So close to you, Musa. So close, just go. Even at the time when Allah was asking Musa to throw the stick, give me my stick. I'm not Moses, by the way. In spite of the, ma- the fact Moses was Egyptian, was born in Egypt, is that right? Yes? Yes? If somebody say no, the stick is here. <laughs> so Moses was, when, when all the magicians, they throw their, uh, make their, their magic and uh, throw their sticks and become look like uh, snakes or whatever you call it, Moses was so so shocked and so scared just to drop the stick. Now so, I was encouraging him, just throw it. Just throw it. You know the amount of fear in his heart? And then he threw it. And it became the big serpent which, which swallowed all the snakes. So this is the ma'iyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the companionship of Allah. You can be in the companionship of anybody and of the nobody. Nobody could be anybody and anybody could be nobody. But remember, if you want the victory, if you want success, if you want achievement, if you want excellence, we should be in the ma'iyya of the source of success, achievement, and excellence. And the simplest is 
to have his book with you. If you can't read, because unfortunately, we, we value any language, but not the Arabic language. And this is inferiority complex. <coughs> Extremely inferiority complex. I'm not saying that because I came from an Arab country, but I'm saying that because the Arab language proverb and metaphor are far ahead, far away, 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 with distances to any other language. The proverb and the derivatives of the English is 600,000. So what? The proverb and the, not the metaphor, the derivatives of the French is 160,000. So what? The proverb and the derivatives of the Russians, 130,000. So what? How much in the Arabic language? Anyone can tell me? I don't want to point to anybody. He's hiding. Are you hiding from me? <laughs> Anyone can tell me? 600,000, 160,000, 130,000. Anybody else? The Arabic? No, no hands up? Yes? More than that. It's about 12 million. 12 million. And you know what, sisters and brothers, what are we missing and losing of not understanding the most rich or the richest? language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. That's why he revealed the Quran in Arabic. This is the introduction of what I'm saying. When you get your pride and your honor, get from the source. Get from the source. Get from the source. Not from the side, lined, whatever you call them, supply. I am in the mood of celebration. You know why? Because I am celebrating you. When I came to this country, 1977, November 1977, I came as a medical student, a medical doctor, not I was as qualified in Egypt. There was nobody in the university. All foreigners could hardly see a young man and woman like you in the campus. Only foreigners. But it is a dedication of our fathers and mothers and grandmother and grandfather who could, could, could not be able to even speak the language. Well, most of them were working hard. Manual worker, most of them. Or shopkeepers. Made it. Made it with pride and with honor to see somebody like you here today after 42 years. At the time of Islamophobia, we have to celebrate you because they are the best product and best example of the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the time when people call us radical, call us extremist, call us whatever they call us, tell them peace be upon you, we have no time for you. We can build community, we build society, we build the future. And we achieve, not only we achieve, because as a Muslims, you don't stop at the level of achievement. Excellence. I don't accept that any one of you pass without excellence. I failed my MD. Any, of the, any, medic, any medic here? Any medic? <laughs> any med medical? Anybody else? More <laughs> 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 like medical, not Muslim. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, medical? <laughs> so, I failed my medical, but I excelled 
You know why, why they gave me the MD when I was not qualified from the university here? Qualified from Azhar University? They valued the product. We have to excel. Even my, my first time was a major failure. Major failure. But because of the amount of work that's been done, they wanted the work to be in the thesis to be put in the library of the medical school. So I myself, at my age, and my time, and my life, will never accept that any one of us in this room qualified without excellence. You know why? Because you want to see that the Prophet is very proud of each and every one of you when you stand up and they mention your name. Because you are one of his followers. You are one of the people that actually he was dreaming to see you. And he said one day, I'd love to see my beloved ones. And his companions said, aren't we your beloved ones? Muhammad said, no. You are my companions. But you are my beloved ones. In Birmingham, in Manchester, in Stockholm, Trent, in London, in everywhere. So when you stand in front of him, in front of Allah, with an excellence. The excellence today, we celebrate what? We, um, I said I celebrate you in this room. You accept the celebration? Yes? Are you celebrating with me? Oh, he's sleeping, those people. <laughs> Where is he coming from? Uh, give them the food. <laughs> wake them up, wake them up, wake them up. Wakey, wakey. We're just, we're just intrigued. Intrigued. Oh, oh, fine. Be careful, I'll get you. <laughs> okay. So, the Muslim schools, which is celebrating nowadays, how many, how many Muslim schools actually on the top? In the report which came a few, weeks, a few days ago? Huh? How many? You don't know that. It's a celebration of the success of your community, of our community. Muslim school started as front room by parents before the mosque were built. 30, 40 years ago. I used to see it in Birmingham, in the front room. The uneducated workers from Yemen and from other places, Pakistan or India or Bangladesh, was trying to do it to teach their children at home. Is how much our success story goes back 30, 40, 50 years ago. It was a road map created and designed by people who could not be able to speak the language, did not know the culture, did not know how to build the community, but they built it with their hearts, with their minds, with their soul, with their emotion, with their dedication, being following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a success. Success of the celebration. So each one of us in this room must stand up for what he or she will be able to achieve and to excel as well. If I fail, I fail to learn, then to succeed, then to achieve, then to excel. I don't take failure as an answer. Never in our life to take failure for an answer. Never. 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 If they shame me, they fame me. The more they shame me, the more they fame me. Because what? I have no time for them. Because I have my plan, my aim, my objective to achieve. And you must achieve what we need to achieve. This is the message that I learned 
here over the last 42 years. When we managed to start long time ago with no resources, you know who built the organization she mentioned? Her name is young people like yourself. At the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We were having no place to stay in Islamic relief. No office. But they used to come after the school till midnight to put in the good old days. There was no internet. There was no what is Wi-Fi. Was, oh, you know what we, have, we used to have? Paper, letters, envelopes, stamps, and we used to use a sponge and sticking the, the addresses on this. It used to be until midnight. Some of them now is working in the United Nations. Some of them now is working in different European countries. And some of them now is actually leading in the British government. But they started at the age of 16, 17, and 18. Like you. This is how we can see the success story of generation to come. If they call you a name, they call you a name, turn your back to them, say, peace be upon you, I have no time for you. They want to engage in a fight, you're in a fight with them. I have no time for fight. We have to live for an aim and the objective to achieve, and we must do that. We have to aim for a role to play, a role. Don't accept in your life, at your age, in your time, in any country that you live without having a role to play. Not only any role, but a leading role. There's no humility when actually you don't ask for your right. You ask for your right. You stand for your right. Don't give up your right to anybody else. So aim for us and role to play and message to deliver and spread. Because each one of us is a follower of the best of teacher of humanity and mankind and everyone. Do you agree? Yes. This is our message. So when we come back to what we are, what we are doing, we have to have this role to play. What's our role in life? What's our role in life, sir? What's your role in life? Um, not to survive, but to thrive. Sorry? That, not just to survive, but to thrive, to succeed. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. To succeed for what? Succeed in uh, everything you can. Very good. Yeah. Have, have literally no end to ambition. Very good. Can you come next to me, please? <laughs> At least uh, the people in, in America will see you. Yep. Yeah, sir. Just tell them what's your name. Um, my name is Nawaf. Yes, Nawaf. It's Arabic name. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so um, taken from uh, my wonderful friend in this um, speech, I believe um, there is no end goal. You're just going to keep achieving, keep succeeding, keep thriving, keep excelling. The sky's the limit, really. So, so whenever you set a goal, just smash it and then Set more goals, smash them, set more goals. It's a never ending cycle of life. That's my message, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep breaking the world record. Keep breaking the world record. There is no ceiling for your achievement. There is no end for discovery. There is no limit for science and technology. No limit. Keep. Keep doing it. I want you to win 
the Nobel Peace Prize. Why not? Why not? Why not? Are they better than us? Or they have got two heads and four legs? Or eight legs and four heads? No, they're like us. But they keep trying and trying and trying and trying till they, they succeeded in doing that. What's our future? You won't talk about future. Who is going to design your future? Or my future? Or your future? When I came here, the most difficult journey in my life, you know what and when? It is the four hours between Cairo and London. This was the most difficult journey of my life 42 years ago. I realized when I was in the, on the plane, that I would never go back, and they're being cut off. And my emotion was boiling, and I was in tears for the four hours. This is a challenge you have to take. You come to a land that you don't have any relatives or any friends, but you struggle, like your parents or your grandparents when they came here. Very painful to cut somebody from his family, from his community, from her family, from her community, and live here. But they believed in the good old days that they want to build a stronger community and better future for all of us here. And they did it. If they failed, they couldn't have been here. If they failed, we could not have been here. I'm very happy to see you. I can catch the sky and the moon and the stars while I'm with you, metaphorically, because this is the status of my excitement of being next to you. Understand what I'm talking about? There's some Arab songs saying that actually. Masik al what do you call it? I hold, I hold, I feel Masri al Hain. Abdul Hanim Hafiz? He is, huh? And he's holding the air in his hand and at that time. So this is because I saw, I saw, I'm seeing now the fruit of what our parents have done in you are the product. Excellent. But what we need to do now is to see what are you going to do, brother? Yes, you. You, you. Yeah, you. Come on, come on. Draw the future for me. Come on. Come on. Give them a hand. Is he trying? Yes, you. We're talking about the future. Inshallah. Yalla, bismillah. Okay, um, so. Um, I don't know what to talk about. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> okay, so uh, I've got one main message, especially for all of us, uh, especially uh, considering that we're in the all the ages, whether we're first parents or in drugs. Uh, we've got to be careful of the society we've grown up in today. Uh, for example, uh, especially with all the judgment and all the, uh, I don't want to use very bad words, but like hypocrites, I suppose. One way to uh, initiate the, the unity, in especially in the Islamic society, is by having events like this, making sure where our foundations are laid, and uh, when there are divisions in cultures or I don't know friendship groups and whatnot, just imagine that, just remember that our foundations are all from the same root, regardless of skin, color, foundation. Uh, <laughs> you guys that. I don't know, I would, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to understand, I'm sorry. Oh crap, it's really bad. Um, yeah. Carry on, carry on. I'm enjoying it. You're enjoying what you thought. Yeah, um, and that goes for both brothers and sisters. Uh, the one thing, especially, so I'm originally from London, I've been living in London for two years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, especially, I did not expect, especially, uh, Kiel, to have such a 
strong and talented society. Uh, obviously, me and most, most of the brothers here. And especially in the sister side as well. And uh, not being judgmental, but the unity between the brothers and the sisters, segregated and together, it's really strong and humble. Though. And personally, from me being from two of the largest cities in the, in the UK, I don't really see that from Birmingham and London. So yeah, just... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want a last, last statement from one of you to come and tell us about... Sorry? Oh, so they, they have to come voluntarily. Anybody want to stand up? Danny, Danny. This one. Danny, come on, Danny. Last, last statement. I like your suit, very handsome. You remind me of the good old days. You know what I used to wear? You remember the Charleston? The what stone? Charleston, the trousers. Oh, okay. The baggy okay. trousers, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You know the canary color? The canary color? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This okay. was my, ver my favorite color. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, this what do you want me to say? About the future. Sorry. Yeah. So, I hate doing this one of the stuff. So, you know, and, you know, thanks to all the brothers for getting me up here. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, thank you. And, I got the future. And, so, where I come from, I've seen, like, both sides. So, as a revert, I see the very big Islamophobic side and the very big, you know, Islamic side. And there are both extreme extremities on both sides. And for me, it isn't about seeing the differences in people. Like, all my family aren't Muslim. I'm the only one in there. And for me, it's just like, what, what we did was when, when um, obviously, all the people that are born Muslim, like when their fathers and their grandparents came over here, is, would they, instead of communities building together, they, they, all we did was we signified the differences between us. And that's why we get separate towns, we get set, we get a state full of just one group, we get a state full of just brown people. And for me it isn't about that, it's, it's about finding our similarities between one another. And I don't have the answer on how to do that, I don't have a clue to be honest. But all I know is, is that the way we've gone so far is not the way. So for me in my future, I, I would love for all for us not to, I know it's a cliche, but to look past all the pull of our skin. And even like the contents of like to look towards the contents of our character. For me, the future isn't about isn't about, you know, the Muslims, you know, succeeding in what they want to do. Like for hundreds of years the Prophet like when he was together, he lived alongside the non-Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, the polytheists. And he never once said to them, Oh yeah, we're gonna succeed over you. He lived alongside them and I think that's what the future for me is. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With these remarks, I can give you, I thank you very much, because the time is uh, over now, and I wish you uh, all the success. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you.